It's got this really handy looking article here about installing the transfer pump drive gear. Same setup that we're working on right now. All necessary dimensions for making this handy tool are given in figure two. Now you can't put something like that in front of me and expect me not to All right, built to specifications. Now we're ready. So first order of business is to get these new fuel pump shaft packing seals put in. The uh, old cat number is a 4B9051, two required. That crosses to 5M6038. That's the modern number there. So I got a spare set. I usually like to double up on all my parts orders. So. To install these seals, we'll start by putting the first one down into the seal retainer here. Just slips right in, pretty nice fit. And it's a really important step to tamp these seals in. Um, it's not in the D3400 manual, but Cat did put out a service bulletin sta stating that it is very uh, um, essential to basically seat these seals because the spring that is there to exert the tension upon these, uh, these retainers is meant to basically keep enough tension on that so that as the packing wears, it will keep deforming and stay tight on the shaft and to the retainer. But when they're brand new, you do want to cinch them in there. So we'll take the first little tapered support washer, put down on top of the seal, and then carefully install the shaft through that seal. And I might use the spring to keep that seal seated. And you might you might peel a little bit of packing material up when you uh, put the shaft through, but that's all right. Okay, there we are. And with the retainer squarely supported on these blocks, that should uh, give me a good surface to uh, tamp against. Now, there's a tool that they say you can make for this. Uh, what I've found is I just use this. It's a 7 8 socket that I slightly modified to disassemble oil filter cans. You'll be seeing more of this little tool when I get into the filter for 1113. But what I like about this, like I said, it's 7 8 Look at that. Fits those little support washers just perfect. So I don't need to make another tool. I've already got one, right? So we'll just go in on top of that support washer. Just tap it in a little bit. Just enough to kind of seat that packing out into the retainer. We're not so much worried about the shaft with this outer one, but we need to get a good seal against the inside of that piece. Okay, it's looking good in there. So we'll just carefully slide the shaft back out. And like I said, we're not so worried about the seal to shaft fit on this outer one, because this outer one just keeps oil from migrating in. That's pretty much the, the purpose of this guy here. But we want to be careful and not roach any more material out of there than is necessary. There we go. Replace that uh, little backup washer in there. That one's good. Okay, we'll put the other seal in the pump body now, but I want to show you a couple things here real quick first. This little hole right here off the end of the screwdriver, that is to catch any diesel fuel that comes past the pump shaft bushing. That shaft and bushing is lubricated by diesel fuel, so anything that gets back there will be blocked by the seal we're about to put in and it will enter that little passage. That little passage is drilled over into the suction side of the pump so it just recirculates it. Quick breakdown on the pump. Fuel line comes from the fuel tank, goes in this front part right here, and that goes all the way over to this passage here which is drilled straight up. This one goes up into the hole right there. That is the suction side of the pump. Gears will pick the diesel fuel up pull it around and basically output it through this other hole over here. That's the pressure passage, and that one feeds all the way up through this furrow. That's what feeds the fuel tower onto the filters. Now the pressure regulating valve goes in this uh, hole down here that's drilled up, 
and it intersects with this uh, pressure passage right here. So any fuel that exceeds spring pressure bypasses past the poppet valve and it intersects with this inlet side that comes from the tank and the excess is just dumped and recirculated at the same time. So pretty basic setup. So we start by placing a support washer down in there and then we drop in the new packing seal. It's a nice fit. Covered up with yet another support washer and I may use the spring again to keep all that stuff together. And we're going to put the pump shaft in now. I just put a light, light little film of oil on this for now. Um, that's really all you need. I don't usually worry about lubricating those, uh, those new packing seals because they are kind of a graphite. Uh, they do have that in them for lubrication, so they, uh, they do pretty well on their own without the addition of any more oil. So just, again, carefully feed this shaft in there. There we go. This is the one we really want to get right, so we're not pulling the shaft back out of the pump now. So tamp that one in, get that heavy block, and I'll put down a little scrap piece of gasket material to uh, support the gear with so we don't do any damage to that. Just use our same uh, special tool here. Stop periodically and do a check. We could go a little bit tighter with it, not detecting too much for drag on that yet. Okay, I'm starting to like that. You can just feel some drag on that pump shaft. Now with the pump supported on the back side so that the drive shaft can hang free, we'll put the idler gear on and again just a very, very light little coat of oil on there. Now the pump body can go on and if I'm going to get flamed at any point in time, this is probably going to be it, but I don't care. I prefer to just put a very light, almost transparent skim of sealer around the outer circumference here and around the bolt holes because these are finely machined pieces that have no gaskets between them they just rely on really really flat surfaces to seal against one another and i'm sorry but these things are 70 80 years old their things aren't what they used to be and i've just had the best luck by putting a little bit of sealer on there granted sealer takes up space. That's going to increase your stack height. That's going to increase your end clearance on the pump gears. Like I said, again, I just, I don't care. It's something that I've done for a long time on these and it's, it's actually worked out better for me in the long run if I just give these surfaces a little bit of help. Cover plate goes on now and we can lock it down with the bolts. Just doing a little spin test here. Everything's good, so I'm happy with the pump up to this point. Next step now is to get the front seal and retainer on, press the drive gear on. We might as well uh, put that spring on there right now. But I need to talk about the base gasket. Now, the old part number was 4B5666. That's this gasket right here. It updates to actually two pieces. We have a 6H9949 and an 8H 4828 again spares that's those two new gaskets right here and the difference is with the original gasket it used to be captured beneath that seal retainer so if you ever needed to renew the base gasket you had to pull the drive gear off and pull this retainer off and mess up that packing seal and everything and then put a new gasket on and so what the new ones do the new base gasket has a hole large enough in it for the entire seal retainer to pass through. And the second piece is just a little bit of a gasket ring that goes under the retainer. So you can leave that big base gasket off now until after you have the drive gear and everything pressed on. Just make sure you get that little ring under the retainer, you're good to go. So we'll put that little ring gasket under there. We'll get this washer back in there. I just uh, <laughs> threw it out for the gasket demonstration just a minute ago. And we'll carefully start this on just until that packing seal contacts the shoulder. There we are. Now is when we get to try out that fancy new tool that we made. 
So this will go through the pump body, surrounds that retainer, and we start the wing nuts on the front side here. Just run this one down just till it touches. Do the same with the other one. And what we do now is just run the wing nuts down evenly, a little bit at a time on each side, until we get that spring compressed and we get the seal retainer with the seal all the way down against the pump body. And I'm going to stop from time to time and just kind of just do a test fit by hand, see what things are like. Might take a little bit of the tension off and catch up with the wing nuts. And we'll just uh, very slowly and very carefully work that thing all the way on. Let me tell you guys, new favorite tool right here. Just like that, boom, that thing is cinched down in place. That's never been so easy. Why couldn't I have thought of that? Just, oh man, so simple, it's stupid. It's just loving it. Oh my gosh, I love it. So, uh, we can put the drive gear and the key on. We might as well get the key started right now. Now, the drive gear. This bronze gear is the early first generation style. Um, these were replaced with steel gears. You can see on the end of this parts unit, kind of rusty, but that's a steel gear. It's got that ring milled around it on the face. That is to be able to identify at a glance that it has the updated part on it. And I've got other steel gears I could use. And this bronze one is getting a little bit of wear from the worm, not gonna lie. It's been beat up a little bit, but it was still a good fit on the shaft. Might back it up with a little bit of sleeve retainer Loctite anyway, just to be sure. But I think I'm gonna reuse this old bronze gear again. Um, do I trust the steel gear more? Yes. But on a coolness scale from one to 10, we're at about an 11 here. I really like this, uh, you know, this early uh, first gen tech that's on 1113. Besides taking into account the modern oils and in all likelihood the very limited amount of hours at 1113 is ever going to get accumulated on it from here on out i can tell you i'm never going to wear this rest way out so we're going with the bronze gear now very carefully in a controlled manner this uh, special tool allows us to press this gear on with some degree of accuracy there we go. Don't want to put any more pressure on it than you need to. Just go until it bottoms. Now we just release tension on the tool. That will allow that spring to drift that seal retainer out to the gear. The gear is holding everything together now. And there we go. So off camera, I installed the telltale drain elbow. Now that's that passage between the inner packing seal and this outer one that if that inner one should fail, you will see fuel running out of the tube that attaches to this. Um, some certain situations, if your telltale drain tube plugs and your inner seal is shot, it will then pressurize the space between the inner and outer seals. Then if the outer seal goes out, it will push fuel past that outer seal. It'll get into the base of that filter housing and run down into the diesel engine oil sump. So that's one thing to look out for if you start getting fuel down in the sump. There's some other reasons that we'll cover in future videos. So final thing is to install the pressure relief pop it, spring, and plug. New copper washer here for the plug. But this is that early style that I've never seen before, as I stated in disassembly. I'll just show you this parts unit here. Pump, this is what I'm used to seeing. Removable base piece, and this is what you usually see for a pressure relief. Quite a bit different from that, uh, that older style. Basically, we just have kind of this little plastic poppet with a lot larger spring. It just kind of butts up against that hole right there, and that's what uh, creates the output pressure of the pump. Um, if these uh, poppets crack and go bad, or if these springs rust or get weak and then lose their tension, that will cause fuel to just completely bypass around these pumps. You don't build enough to uh, push past the filters and get into the injection pumps and it won't run. That's actually a pretty common thing, but um, the spring looks good. I don't know what it's supposed to be for, for rate. Uh, nothing in my manuals covers this early style. I think I like this better with that aluminum poppet though on there and this 
the screw out plug, it'd be a lot easier to uh, change that out. So I'm just gonna go with the spring and we're gonna, we're gonna see what this thing does. We're gonna see what kind of pressure it outputs. It's an easy enough uh, fix to pop this plug out of the bottom and replace the spring or get something that's a little bit stronger if we have to, if we need to up the pressure. So I'm just gonna put this thing together and see how it works. All right, and with that, we're coming down to it. We're just about at the finish line. I know this video is dragging on again, guys. I apologize, but one more thing I need to show you. So we've already covered the base gasket. Now we talk about the O-ring that seals the pressure passage around that furl. Um, 7B0305 is the current number, which basically the parts book says uh, 7B305 is the old one, so they just formatted it into the new uh, Caterpillar four-digit code. So... Again, spares. Now, problem I've always had with these O-rings is trying to get them to fit around that furl. Just compare the size difference between that old swelled up original and the new one. You can tell there's quite a lot of difference right there. You can see the old one fits on just fine. But the new one is such a tight fit on that furl, there's no way you're going to get that thing to stay on there. Especially once you get this, uh, this base gasket on, that further decreases the how much that furl stands out and that new o-ring is not going to stay and this took me years to figure out this isn't in the manual anywhere so pay attention i'll give you guys a hint carefully loosen that furl and then just pull it out step two then is start the o-ring onto the furl once it's out just be careful not to put a twist in it it's a lot easier to do when you actually have some uh, real estate to stretch that thing onto then you can put the base gasket on and then just start the furl in there that will not only locate the base gasket it'll also hold that o-ring and all you got to do is bolt this thing up when uh, it draws in tight against that filter housing the housing will seat that furl back down in the bottom of its bore the o-ring's just going to kind of slide up it and then clamp load will take over it'll hold it in place it'll mash it out and <laughs> it'll basically take on the shape of this old stretched out uh, square looking one this one started out round at one time so you don't know how many hours I fought with those things trying to get those to stay on and it finally hit me. Just take the darn furl out. Makes life a lot easier. So after all of that work, it just slides into place. So long as the gear meshes with the worm on the first try. So it's not, so we'll just rotate a little bit. There we are. You can expect to have to draw this in under a certain amount of pressure because you're compressing the spring with that seal retainer and mashing that o-ring out so you're never going to seat these entirely by hand so i know that was a ridiculous amount of work for what doesn't look like much progress on an engine in the grand scheme of things at first glance you can't even tell anything's really been changed but it's a critical piece and it should have no problem pushing fuel up through those filters and on its way out to the engine. I think next video we'll get into maybe the beginnings of the injection pump and continue that fuel passage on its way. Also, big shout out to Union Tractor and Equipment, Alberta, Canada, guys in the shop. It's November 8th, 1948. You guys rock, all right? Devised one heck of a tool and that thing really made life a lot easier. Kind of wish I would have had that tool on the last one of these jobs I did. So anyway, I can tell by the files on the camera. This is going to be a long one. I might even have to split it up into two parts. I don't know. I'm going to quit yammering. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in again.